Okay, brilliant. Um, well, hello everyone and welcome to today's virtual open day for the UCL Urban Laboratories Masters of Arts and Sciences in Global Urbanism. Um, my name is Joe Penny. I'm a lecturer in the UCL Urban Lab and the program director of the MASC in Global Urbanism. Um, and today I'm joined by another member of the Urban Lab and lecturer in Global Urbanism, Dr. Njohu Morgan, who's calling from Johannesburg, I think, um, where as part of the program, we have an institutional partnership with the University of Witzvaterstrand. And I'm also very happy to be joined by two of our current student representatives on the program, Lily Flashman and Ginani Utami. So in terms of how this virtual open day session goes, um, we're going to spend about 30 minutes introducing the MASC Global Urbanism as a program, the Urban Lab as a department, and UCL East as our new campus where much of the teaching is based. Um, hopefully Njogu and I can convey a little bit of what's distinctive about what we do here. Um, but failing that, you'll get to hear firsthand from Lily and Gina about their experiences on the program, uh, which is now in its second year, so reasonably well established. Then after about 30 minutes or so, um, we'll have another half an hour for questions. So if you have questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. Um, but if you're watching this as a video afterwards, then you won't be able to do that. Um, but maybe you can just email me questions if you have them. So the MASC Global Urbanism is a transdisciplinary Masters of Arts and Sciences taught postgraduate program. And the program aims to provide students with critical skills, specialist knowledge, and an appreciation for engaged and ethical urban practice. Our goals that the program will support students to play a critical role in tackling contemporary urban challenges and in shaping more socially and ecologically just urban futures in whatever career they pursue in the future. We think that the program has a number of distinctive features that make it stand out. Um, the first is that it's case study driven, partnership based and immersive. So it's a program where you'll learn about and debate urban processes, forms of knowledge and practice, not just in the classroom and from academics, but also on site visits, field trips, through workshops and from a range of urban practitioners, including planners, designers, policymakers, activists and others. Second, the program is designed to help students to develop a comparative urban imagination by moving between a range of different urban sites and experiences, including of course, London, where the program primarily is taught, but also Johannesburg in South Africa, Kingston in Jamaica, Skardu in Pakistan, to name just some of the other places that we focus on. And of course, the students all come with their own urban experiences from around the world that they share and that we learn from also. Through the program, you'll be introduced to a range of analytical frameworks, uh, engaged practices and methodological techniques to develop a rich and transdisciplinary understanding of the urban and of the key contemporary urban challenges. And you'll be assessed on what you learn in a variety of different ways. So of course, essays, um, which are kind of fairly standard uh, across most university teaching, but also in portfolio work, group projects, presentations and such like. And finally, the program is embedded in UCL's unique history and culture of urban studies and the built environment research and practice. And this is very much reflected in the teaching team, uh, which draws from, on academics from across UCL's different faculties and departments. Um, so just to name some of them here, um, Professor Claire Melhuish, who's an anthropologist by training and the current head of the urban lab. Uh, Professor Jennifer Robinson, who's in the geography department and a leading thinker on comparative urban theory and methodologies. Uh, Professor Ben Kempkin, who's based in UCL's architecture department and is an urban historian. Professor Nishat Awan, whose work uses creative cartographic methods to critically engage with migration and other issues. Dr. Pablo Sendra from the Bartlett School of Planning, who's an urban designer with particular expertise in processes of co-design. And Dr. Cla uh, Cara Blackmore, who's an anthropologist, um, whose practice is curation um, and whose role on the program is as the curator of the UCL Urban Room, which we'll talk about more soon. So just from the teaching team, hopefully that gives you a sense of the diversity of the intellectual and practice-based expertise on the program. 
Um, but the MASC Global Urbanism is also embedded in the wider UCL Urban Laboratory Network. So another one of the unique things I think about um, this program is that, like I said, we're embedded in the UCL Urban Laboratory, um, which is both a teaching department, but it's also a cross-faculty and transdisciplinary urban network at UCL. The UCL Urban Lab was set up in 2005 to bring together urbanists from across UCL, um, as well as beyond, to share ideas, engage with pressing issues and challenges, and to think creatively about public engagement and about how the university can open itself out to wider communities of practice. And the MASC Global Urbanism Program is very much rooted in this research and engagement culture. So the pictures that you can see here, it's just really one example of this. Um, the pictures are from a major two day event that we hosted about the state of the legacy um, of, the, of the Olympic games, um, which was hosted at the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park, um, where we brought together a range of scholars, practitioners and activists to kind of critically unpack the afterlives and the effects of the London 2012 Olympic Games on East London. And here's just a slide with some of our current activity areas or kind of key areas of focus for us at the UCL Urban Lab, um, which gives you a kind of sense of what the Urban Lab is working on and also some of the themes that students are introduced to on the MASC Global Urbanism Programme. Um, so each one of these activity areas is led by one of the Urban Labs co-directors, uh, many of whom give guest lectures on the MASC Global Urbanism Programme as well. And every year alongside each of these activity areas, we also have an annual theme that structures some of the exhibitions, events and workshops that we curate. Um, and that um, annual theme this year is memory. Another hopefully exciting part of the program is that we are part of a whole new UCL campus, UCL East, which is situated in the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park in Stratford. And this campus itself is just uh, one part of a major East Bank cultural quarter for London, which also includes the BBC, the v &A, or Victoria and Albert Museum, uh, Sadler's Wells and the London College of Fashion. Um, and each of these institutions is um, on their way, either on their way to the, the area, their buildings are being built or they're already established. So um, increasingly, this is becoming uh, a very interesting place to be situated. The campus itself is made up of two buildings. Um, in fact, if I just go backwards, the one on the left um, is One Pool Street, which opened in 2022. And the one on the right is Marshgate, which opened at the start of this academic year in 2023. So students on the program will be taught in purpose-built teaching spaces and workshop spaces. Um, which have been designed to facilitate group work as well as dialogue as part of the teaching culture on the program. And students are also um, part of a wider research culture at UCL East, which emphasizes collaboration and public and community engagement. And that's reflected also in the design of the buildings, um, much of which includes publicly accessible space um, and in the range of opportunities and projects that students are encouraged and supported to get involved in, some of which are listed on that slide there. One of the publicly accessible spaces we have where collaboration and community engagement is central is the UCL Urban Room. So the UCL Urban Room is an experimental exhibition space, but also a creative workshop and teaching space as well, based at One Pool Street. It's there for students, researchers, artists and community members to present ideas, um, host discussions, exhibit their work, and also just really kind of the ideal behind it is to develop new thinking and practice on issues around global urbanisms, heritage, social history, arts, and more. Just in the first year, the curator, Dr. Cara Blackmore, has facilitated a range of different events, exhibitions, and workshops on issues including community action, navigating healthcare for people who live on London's canals, um, aerial surveillance, and currently um, an exhibition called Undocumented, question um, mark, which focuses, focuses on migration journeys and the role that documents plays in those. 
So that's the context in which the MASC Global Urbanism Programme takes place. Um, and now I'll give a very quick overview of the programme itself um, to give you a sense of what students on this programme have to look forward to. Um, so the programme is divided into core modules, um, a module being a class, basically, um, studio pathway modules and elective modules. Um, so there are four core modules that all of the students on the program take. Um, so that's a nice way of making sure there's a, a kind of a cohort of students who go through at least four modules together. Um, and these are global urbanism theory and politics, which is a module about comparative urban theory and about thinking how we can produce urban knowledge about key urban processes and challenges across a diversity of urban contexts and experiences. I heard someone today refer to it as a smorgasbord of global urban theory, which I thought was a nice way of putting it. Um, then there's engaged urbanism. Um, and on this module, you'll reflect on the ethics, politics, and possibilities of intervening creatively and collaboratively in different urban challenges. Um, and this year, we've been focusing specifically on housing inequality and housing justice. In the second term, um, one of the core modules is Cities Methodologies, which is a hands-on practice-based module that introduces students to a range of experimental ways of doing urban research. This is led by Professor Nishat Awan, and it really focuses a lot on um, different kinds of mapping um, practices, which is, I think, very interesting. And then the final core module is the dissertation. And here you'll be supported by the teaching team to develop your own independent substantive research project. So this is really for students to get the chance and the opportunity to contribute to urban knowledge in their own way um, and also to urban practice potentially. So across all of these core modules, you'll learn from different members of the teaching team, um, but also from the Urban Lab's extensive network of academic collaborators, practitioners and community partners. And then students have the choice between pursuing either the London Studio Pathway or the Global Studio Pathway. So the London Studio Pathway takes London um, and particularly East London as a kind of laboratory for understanding the this kind of global city through its planning, architecture and design, its governance, heritage, history, geography and arts. So thinking very transdisciplinary um, about how we understand London, the history of London, um, the contemporary moment of London and, and potentially London's different futures. If you take the global studio pathway, you'll focus on a series of case study sites, um, including, as mentioned earlier, Kingston, Skardu and Johannesburg. And you'll also have um, the opportunity to take part in a 10 day visit to Johannesburg, which Njogu will talk to you about soon. Um, and as part of that uh, trip to Johannesburg, you'll also get to work alongside students from the University of Witzvaterstrand, which I think is a really um, interesting and, and great opportunity too. And then finally, student, uh, students get to choose two elective modules. Um, so these can include modules within the program on the pathway that a student has chosen not to focus on. Um, but students are also welcome to choose from a quite huge array of other modules across the university. Um, of course, depending on the availability, suitability and timetabling as well. So an important part of how students learn on this program is through site visits. Um, in fact, Lily and Gina and I have just come off a site visit. So we're all feeling a little bit cold because um, it's, yeah, become very chilly in London, um, but we're, we're soon to be warming up inside. Um, so we learned through a series of site visits uh, across the program. Um, the ones in London include visits to a range of places like the Olympic Park, which is where the program is situated, um, the London Docklands, um, Barking and Dagenham's Riverside, which I believe is currently the biggest regeneration project in Europe, um, although that could be just what the local council says. Um, the Alton Estate, which is a grade two listed public housing estate in West London, where we look at community and people's planning, um, and a radical community archive um, called the 56A Info Shop in Elephant and Castle, which is where uh, we were this morning. And in addition to these London-based field trips, uh, those, like I said, on the Global Studio Pathway can also look forward to the intensive uh, visit to South Africa. So I will 
hand over now to Njogu, who's going to tell you a little bit more about what happens on this overseas residential trip. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Joe, for that. Uh, greetings, everyone. Joining you from Johannesburg, where unlike London, it's extremely hot. Uh, it's about 30 something degrees today, as it has been for the last few weeks. Um, so if you do come to, if you join the Global Studio Pathway that uh, Joe Penny was talking about, then you'd have a chance to uh, visit Johannesburg and the surrounding region. Um, because one of the propositions of the MASC is trying to think and rethink the urban uh, from the perspective of the Global South. Um, I think one of the claims that we make is that uh, the field of urban studies has uh, tradi traditionally, let's go back to the previous slide. <laughs> yeah, sorry. No problem. Um, yeah, knowledge production has mainly been from generated from experiences and dynamics in Western contexts. Uh, and I think what we see uh, recently is uh, some of the most rapid urbanization is happening in elsewhere. Uh, and if that is the case, uh, then there are very interesting uh, dynamics that we can understand from the field of urban studies, thinking about, as Joe was mentioning, planning questions, architectural arts, uh, and so on. So in this light, we've created a partnership, as Joe was mentioning, with the University of Witwatersrand, Vitra uh, which is a complex uh, Afrikaans word, uh, which in English means the ridge of the white waters. Uh, and the aim there really is to, as I say, to work in partnership with uh, colleagues and students and uh, an observatory called the Gauteng City Region Observatory that monitors developments around Johannesburg and a wider agglomer agglomeration called uh, uh, Gauteng. Uh, so you would have an opportunity to come on the field trip for about two weeks uh, to engage with academic partners, but also uh, practitioners. Uh, Joe, you can move on to the next slide now. And if, as I say, uh, some of the kind of most exciting urbanization developments are happening in the global south, uh, there's something really uh, amazing that's unfolding almost in real time as we speak uh, in an area that I'm sort of highlighting in front of you there, that is located about five to six hours due northeast of Johannesburg. Um, There's kind of a Moloto corridor and Bushbuck Ridge. Um, effectively, uh, there's a new urban formation that is emerging in really interesting and dynamic ways, uh, many of which we don't really quite understand yet. Um, and so this region was traditionally, uh, you know, draws back from South Africa's history, which unfortunately uh, is one uh, of, of terrible injust injustices. Uh, so it's an area that emerged when uh, people of color were forcibly relocated uh, there. Uh, but in the last 20 years, as I say, uh, they, it's an area that has really been witnessing uh, phenomenal uh, growth in housing development and development of roads. Uh, in ways which are really unusual and perplexing. Uh, so if you came on the field trip, uh, part of the objective is to really understand what is going on there and think up, think about it in relation to Johannesburg and the kind of wider region uh, surrounding it, uh, because it, it looks like the emergence of this area uh, has a very much to do with the, the kind of relationships that people in Johannesburg and the surrounding area have with it. Um, uh, and and so on. Uh, so there will be about two weeks of intensive studying, uh, seminars, lectures, uh, uh, field visits. So you'd have an opportunity to interact with uh, practitioners who are involved in the governance of this area, but also in Johannesburg. Um, but um, there would also be opportunities for fun and excitement uh, because right next to this area that I'm uh, telling you, is one of the largest national parks uh, in the world, uh, which features uh, some of the big five. Um, it's called the Kruger National Park. Uh, so there'd be time devoted and dedicated that, that allows you to uh, go and, and, and visit. Um, so, uh, but conceptually, the question we're really thinking about uh, through the two weeks uh, is this notion of extended urbanization, 
Um, yeah, and again, really trying to think about how this area relates to to wider Johannesburg. So I hope it's something that you would be uh, intrigued by uh, because we're very intrigued uh, about it. Um, but there's so much more to say about it. Uh, so if you have any questions, we can answer uh, during the question and answer. But I just wanted to give you a quick flavor of what this entails. Great. Thanks so much, Njogu. So in terms of uh, financial support and scholarships, there are a couple of ways in which we can support students on this program. Um, first, there's the Ruth Glass Scholarship um, that the Urban Laboratory itself runs. Um, so this scholarship is named after and acknowledges the huge contribution made by the sociologist Ruth Glass to the development of cross-disciplinary urban scholarship in the UK, and specifically at UCL, um, where she was instrumental in establishing the Centre for Urban Studies in 1958. So this scholarship is uh, for UK home students applying to the MASC Global Urbanism Program specifically, and it covers uh, tuition fees for one year full-time study and a 52-week living stipend. There are also a couple of other scholarships um, that students uh, may be eligible for. Um, so there's the Bartlett Promise scholarships that are aiming to enable students from backgrounds that are underrepresented in the Bartlett as a faculty to pursue master's studies here. So there are 10 of these scholarships and they also cover tuition fees um, and living and study expenses. And then there are, as um, in addition to that 10, there's also um, four Bartlett Promise scholarships that are open specifically to applicants who are nationals and residents of a number of sub-Saharan African countries. Um, and these are scholarships that also cover tuition fees and living and study expenses. Um, so you can uh, learn about all of these scholarships um, and how to apply online and you can get some information there. You can also email us if you have any questions about that. Um, yeah. And now um, I think you've probably heard enough from, uh, certainly enough from me, um, enough from the teaching team in general though. So I'm gonna hand over to um, our two student representatives who um, we haven't, we haven't uh, checked what they're gonna say or anything, but hopefully they're gonna say some nice, thing, nice things about being on the program. Hey, um, thank you, Joe. Thank you, Njogu. Um, now we're going to talk about uh, our student experience for the past term. We've been here for a term um, and uh, I'm going to be following the global studio pathway and Lily is going to be following the London studio pathway. So um, you want to stop? Yeah, I can start. Yeah. So for the uh, global studio pathway, um, I feel like with uh, my experience to this program, um, it's exactly what what was presented in in the in in the many um, introduction about the program that it's transdisciplinary and I also find what is unique about this program um, is the combination of the global urbanism and engage urbanism which where with global urbanism we study more about um, the major um, urban theories and also urban debates uh, scholarship debates <laughs> that's happening around the world, not just uh, in the global north, but we're also exploring some of those concepts in the global south. And with engaged urbanism, where is more of the intuitive part of it, where we're, we're doing site visits to different areas. And because we're focusing in uh, London housing <laughs> justice, we get to um, visit some of those places and interact with communities. So it's a good balance between theory and also um, practice um, in, in my um, experience. And it's also interesting that I'm taking the global studio pathway because at the same time, um, I'm exploring all these uh, London urban changes and also uh, the debates about the urban policies in London. But um, they it, at the same week, I'm also learning about the context in other cities. Um, with the Global Studio Pathway, I'm learning three different cities in just the first term. So I'm learning about Johannesburg and also Kingston in Jamaica and Skardu in um, uh, Pakistan which is very interesting because all these different uh, geographical areas have very different histories and also political um, 
dynamics and also historical uh, and cultural and social um, dynamics. So it's very interesting to have these going on and kind of have, uh, you know, your own, you have the freedom to kind of explore your experience with these different urban contexts. And uh, my background is in architecture, and Lily's background is um, history, I think. Ha yeah, well, housing. Ha and we have so many different um, students from different uh, backgrounds, not just um, from different countries, but we also study different things. So we can kind of contribute those backgrounds to the studies because um, it's, um, it's very it's a very dynamic uh, study where uh, there's a lot of discussions going on between students and we share our own urban experience and try to situate those uh, perspectives from our personal experience and also from the things that we're learning. And we have so many rich academic um, resources. We have great uh, team. Um, we have so many great readings that we can explore, and we're always encouraged to um, have our new thinking and also challenge the current um, ideas about urban practices, urban trends um, th that's happening in the world. And I think that's kind of interesting because we're we're expected to uh, go beyond the status quo and just kind of experiment and uh, be more intuitive and yeah it's it's yeah, yeah it's it's more like uh urban planning but in a more um artistic and intuitive uh creative kind of way i think there's a lot of feelings involved and also we learn about different stuff like uh storytelling um and we also learn about theaters it's just a very rich uh program so yeah it's very interesting in my experience um Thanks, Gina. Hi, I'm Lily. I'm also a student. I think Gina's covered most of it. That was really helpful. But I think what would be good to kind of focus on or highlight is that it really is a combination of theory and practice. So we spend a lot of time introducing concepts and ideas, having really varied discussions with people from lots of different walks of life, um, different pro professional backgrounds, academic backgrounds. And then the bit that I've been enjoying the most is being able to apply that to you know, to specific locations. So as Joe said, we were in an, in the 56A info shop archive just this morning. And to be able to think about these things in the classroom and then apply them to real world context has been invaluable. Um, also, I'll just add, um, there is loads of great opportunities to um, do extracurricular stuff. So for example, I'm involved in the Just Space Knowledge Exchange, and I think Gina is too, where we're placed with other students um, from across the Bartlett into different community groups at the moment. And that's been really helpful to kind of understand specific, specific urban processes, planning regulations, and kind of get to the heart of combining, you know, art, humanities, politics, social justice, um, and architecture. So I think, yeah, I think that I'll leave it there, but it's been an absolute privilege to have the chance to, to think about so many different things um, in such a welcoming and interesting environment. Brilliant, thanks both. We should have just got you to both to speak for half an hour. That would probably been a much better sales pitch. Thank you. Um, great. So that brings us to the end of um, the structured bit of the hour. Um, and we are right on time. That was half an hour. So, you know, way good for us. Um, and now we can kind of hand it over to you um, if you have any questions for us. Um, if you're feeling a little bit shy, you might want to type those questions into the chat. Uh, if you're not feeling so shy, then please feel free to uh, raise your virtual hand and we can call on you and uh, yeah. Just any questions that you might have about the program, how the program works, any of the kind of maybe some questions about applications, we can try and answer those. Um, if you have questions specifically for our two student reps, then please ask those as well. Okay, Jonathan, you've raised your hand. Okay, I, I hope my connection uh, works well. Um, joining here from uh, Freetown, I have a question from for the, uh, the student reps. Um, it sounds like there's some overlap between uh, the London studio and the global studio. And then I saw that there's also kind of the elective courses from um, the, the London East campus. So I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about 
the opportunities you have and um, uh, between the two studio paths and then also the elective paths and, and how that's been for you from the student perspective. Thank you. Um, I'm happy to go through that quickly. So I've taken the London studio and Guinness taken the global studio. Um, so typically you would take one pathway, but there is also the opportunity um, to take an elective module from the other studio pathway as well. So if you're really keen to do one pathway, but you also really want to study a specific module in the other one, there is a possibility to do that. Um, and also there is, you have another elective module, so um, you can take that either from another degree programme um, or from the new UCL East module selection as well. So yeah, the, the modules are varied. There's often ways to kind of work out how to kind of include everything that you want to study. Yeah, and there's opportunities for you if you're interested in an elective in the department planning unit or maybe in other Bartlett programs or even go cross disciplinary, you, you can do that in the electives. Yeah. But more, for me personally, because I'm interested in this, um, to have this kind of um, balance with the global studio and London studio, I, I use the my elective to do the London studio pathway. So I get best of both worlds. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, great, thanks both. Anybody else on the call have a question? Or Jonathan, if you have more questions, feel free to ask. <laughs> or you can type the questions also if you prefer that. Uh, so a quick question um, in the chat, how many students are on this course? What are the class sizes? Yeah, great question. Um, so this year we have um, 25 students on the program. Um, 26 if you encounter somebody who's taking the program part-time and who started in the first year of the program. Um, and so on the core modules, there's usually at least 25, although some students choose to do our modules as electives. So you're looking at maybe a maximum of around 28, I think is probably the biggest class size we have on our program. Um, and it's always great to have students um, choose our modules as electives because that, again, just I find um, enriches the, the classroom um, even more from people who are coming from different uh, intellectual backgrounds. Um, and introduces the students in our program to, to new people from across the faculty, but also beyond the faculty. So we get people from geography, for example, um, choosing our modules as elective sometimes. And then some of the modules are, are a bit smaller than that. So um, if you if you take one of the studio pathways, you might be in a class of 10 to 12 people. Um, so it really ranges, um, but it's so far this year, I think the maximum is about 28. Okay, we have another question coming up in the chat. Um, hello, interested in your program. I have an architecture background, but the most interesting projects for me um, are dedicated to urban planning. So my question is, is there written spoken workshops during the program? Could I use it in practice in projects? Is there written spoken? Questions there written such open workshops during the program. Um, not sure I fully understand the what you mean by written spoken workshops. I mean, we do a lot of the teaching through workshops um, and sort of through a workshop way, um, specifically. So it's very rare, I think, on this program where you, 
to be sitting in a lecture where you don't get to speak. Um, what we tend to try and do is, yes, have a little bit of lecturing in most of the sessions, but also have a lot of questions which students work on in groups, specific tasks that we get students to work on in groups, um, and like different activities that happen, um, be it looking through zines or publications together, potentially on uh, site visits where you'd be walking around talking to the person who's leading the site visit. Uh, like I said, today we were looking through archives, so engaging with material um, whilst also going on a walk around the area. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I would say there is a lot of workshop based activity on the, um, on the program. Yeah. Um, um, Joe, I think she's um, she's asking if it's a no studio based. I think most. Uh, things we're doing are actually no studio based like we do have engaged um, classes but most of the assignments that we get to do is we write essays and we explore our own um, ideas mm. although in the east london studio module at the moment we're creating a magazine or a zine yeah. or a set of posters so it's a kind of combination of the written work and a more creative practice as well yeah Yes, that's really helpful. Thanks, Gina and Lily. But it's not a design based program. So it's not there's not kind of studio based design teaching. Um, although having said that, again, you have your electives that you can take. And one of the electives is civic design, which is more design oriented um, and but a kind of focusing on co-design. So co-designing um, solutions to community based problems. Um, Thanks very much, Alexandra, for that question. Uh, we have another question, and then I'll go back to your second question. So, hello, thanks for the presentation. You're very welcome. Uh, what are the various career prospects usually chosen after completion of this course? Which is also another question around job prospects. Uh, really good question, and a difficult one to ask because we're such a new program. Um, and so the first cohort have actually only very recently just finished, and I haven't gotten around to asking them what they've all done in the two months since they left us, um, since they finished up their dissertations. But I can speak a little bit, I guess, to the kinds of um, the kinds of roles that I think this program would hopefully be kind of equipping people for. So certainly, I think roles in um, urban policy. Um, and urban politics, so urban government, um, but also a range of different um, roles in civil society, be that in um, research and think tanks, um, or be that in um, working as an urban planner or um, as a in architecture practice, I think. Obviously, you couldn't go straight into architecture just having done this program, but I think this program provides a really unique and interesting kind of um, addition to somebody who would, has studied architecture before. So um, as Gina says, she studied architecture before. So hopefully it would be giving people new perspectives on their existing practice, um, which I think would also be kind of translated also into the private sector. Um, so yeah, really kind of a range of kind of policy practice, um, research, um, in in broadly speaking the urban field um and of course also um scholarship and academia as well does anyone want to add on to that i don't want to uh just answer all the questions in jogu or Lily, yeah. Lily, if I have additional thoughts yeah no just two quick things uh thanks for your question of, uh, about uh whether there'll be a kind of a studio-based uh, design element in the in the program what made me uh, it made me, your question made me think about one of the, I think, really unique aspects of the program. Uh, in, in the introduction, Joe spoke about how it's a transdisciplinary program. Uh, so the back, background of students from last year and this year you know, has really been diverse. Uh, and what it does um, is that it tends to produce like really interesting debates uh, in, the, in the kind of learning journey. Um, so for instance, uh, in this year, we have quite a number of students who come actually from kind of design backgrounds. Uh, so they have not necessarily had an opportunity to engage with, the, as Joe was mentioning, the traditional sort of essay format as a way of uh, answering questions. Um, but however, they bring their that kind of strength in design. Um, I think it's been mentioned that one of the uh, assignments out of the, in the London studio uh, pathway involves putting together a 
um, what are you calling it, uh, Kina? Um, uh, a little zine. Um, and so because they've got this kind of skills of design and visual presentation, uh, you know, they, they're really able to thrive and do well and work with the students that you know, who may not necessarily have this kind of background. Um, so just to quickly say, I think one of the advantages is that the potential of cross-pollination of uh, across the different disciplines. Um, and then quickly around potential future career pathways, in addition to what Joan's mentioning, just to say, you know, that the Urban Lab is itself in the process of um, developing a PhD program. Um, so in the near future, it could be, if you're interested with the kind of intriguing questions that emerge through the MAIC, you may choose to uh, uh, pursue them through the PhD program. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm going to add about the uh, no studio and studio based assignments. I think it's not intimidating for someone who has never engaged in any studio based programs. Um, I mean, Lily's not from architecture background, but she's engaging in this creative studio process. I think we are free to kind of combine our background. If you have, um, for example, the East London lab, we have someone who has a background in chemical engineering and she, she has the freedom to kind of explore that in trying to understand some of the issues in the housing issues using her background as a chemical engineer. And that's, I think that's one of the most exciting parts about this program. You can actually integrate your expertise and your interest. Yeah, and equally there's people with a heritage background from mu museums and galleries, there's historians, there's people from more political backgrounds. So to be honest, it really depends on what you want to get out of, out of it and what questions you want to ask, um, which I think is a real strength of the programme. Yeah, and if you're worried about career prospects, I think UCL has a, a great um, platform for you to yeah. kind of discuss that. Um, there's the UCL, what's it called? Career, career service. Career service. You can you can kind of consult, and and I think it's not it's it's not a problem about. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunities for you to engage in different fields with this program because it's still uh, connected to the Bartlett and you have uh, this amazing faculty, you will have this amazing connection with these, um, you know, scholars, leading scholars. So Absolutely. yeah, there's a lot of different opportunities. And I think also quickly, just when you're going on all of these site visits and you're having conversations with people, these are the moments where you might kind of get an idea of what you want to do later on. Um, so it's an ongoing process and it's kind of yeah it depends where you're where you've come from and what you want to achieve but it, it's been really helpful um in working out whether to go down the more architecture route or the more humanities route it really depends on your interests and expertise and where you want to go in the future I think there's a question that we might have missed. Um, can you recommend any books, research, podcasts, or resources that will help to prepare me for this course? Joe? <laughs> Good question. Um, well, there's um, a book that, I mean, I would really recommend having a look through a lot of the UCL Urban Laboratories publications actually is a really interesting starting point to get a sense of the research culture um, and the kind of practice-based research culture. So um, I'm thinking in particular of the Urban Pamphleteer um, series that the Urban Lab has produced over the past sort of 10 to 15 years, um, which takes the idea of a, a kind of an urban pamphlet, um, a kind of publicly accessible document um, based on specific urban challenges and issues um, and then tackles those in a very public um, cross-disciplinary way. So those are, I think are really interesting and we've got, um, I, I can't remember what number we're on now, maybe kind of 10 or so and the last one was on culture and memory, so thinking about heritage, thinking about museums is an interesting kind of focal point for thinking through some of the issues um that we can that we kind of face in terms of um the urban as a place of creative destruction but also kind of memorialization 
there's ones on skateboarding there's ones on um public housing and public housing de demolition so that's a, a really good place to start i think um and then um in terms of books there's a book called engaged urbanism um which emerged out of a series of um, seminars and workshops that the urban laboratory hosted on creative urban methodologies and that's a really fascinating book it draws on a lot of ucl's urban expertise so a lot of the faculty across the school of um uh, the bartlett uh, faculty uh, so planning architecture civil engineering etc but also geography um, anthropology the development planning unit really it's very diverse um, and it engages with um, scholars and practitioners outside of the university and outside the ballot as well. So that's, I think, probably a good starting point. And if anyone has any other kind of ones to chip in, why not? Yeah, yeah. No, the other only other addition I would make is uh, depending on your interest area, uh, my recommendation would be to go onto the, uh, you know, search through the UCL staff lists. Um, and just kind of have a look, uh, get an, an idea of their research interests and look at their publications. Um, that will give you some insight also uh, as to the kind of questions or themes that you'd expect to encounter uh, in the program. So that's kind of a quick cheat. Yeah. So we have another question. Um, does the program look at C40 cities COP or other global initiatives aiming to forge more sustainable cities? So I think this is a theme um, that does come up again um, in a number of different ways on the program. So I'm thinking in particular right now of city studios, and I'm thinking um, of the lectures that are given about Kingston, Jamaica and SCADU. Um, and I think Climate and the environment play huge roles in thinking through those two cities and how they're being governed and planned. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's definitely this this does reoccur throughout the program. And there's bits in the London Studio Pathway that are going to be looking at this as well, particularly in second term. So, yes, I would say we do engage with this. Of course, it's it's one of the greatest urban challenges that we face. Um, whether or not we kind of focus strongly on kind of a particular global initiatives like COP. Um, certainly I don't research or talk about that in, in the stuff that I teach. I wouldn't necessarily know on the, um, on every bit of the program. Um, but again, like if you're interested in these things, there's gonna be an elective on that in the UCL um, module catalog, which definitely does talk about those things in a very in-depth way. If that's not covered by one of my colleagues on the program. Yeah, just to add joke, yeah, this definitely comes up in the city studio module where one of the things we do is we try to think about how policies circulate or not uh, around the globe. Uh, and so you know one of and one of the ways in which we do is just to, as you say, to think through these questions of urban sustainability. Uh, and thematically to look at you know specific initiatives so we can think about related to say transportation um housing energy um and how some some of these programs uh are circulating so in fact a few days ago we spoke about uh the concept of uh, bus rapid transport um which is a new concept you know that is you know really accelerated especially in the global south and one of the arguments that is made about the bus rapid transport, which is effectively, if you don't know about the bus rapid transport, it's a, a form of a light rail on, on but really buses. Uh, when one of the arguments that proponents of the BRT have made is, 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 is it's a means to mitigate uh, the effects of climate breakdown and climate change. So definitely we really look at international actors um, uh, in, in, in the modules. Yeah, just to add from Njogu, uh, with the with the um the modules that I'm doing with Njogu in City Studio, I think they touch a bit about the new urban agenda as well and how uh, we kind of explore that 
as, as a global um, policy, but also we see on the ground, like what are the realities of these cities and whether that, you know, how, whether there's any gap between how do we achieve those goals with these realities. So it's very context-based. We kind of trying to understand the, the context of, of on the ground level. So I think I find that kind of interesting because, um, before that, I only see this global agenda as from, from the, you know, bird's eye view perspective, never seeing really what's going on within these different cities, because um, there's always different um, dynamics going on in different um, places around the world. So I, I find that, that really um, unique about this module. Yes, there's definitely a huge gap, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're nearly at the hour, um, at which point I promised the speakers that they would be able to leave and potentially go away for their weekends. Um, but if there are any last questions that people have, um, we will hang on for a minute or so more um, so you can ask those. Um, If I can add something quickly, which I also find really fascinating about the course, uh, I mean, about the MASC, is this notion of co-production of knowledge. Um, uh, it's a strong theme across all the different modules. Uh, so, I mean, what's been exciting for us is, um, you know, working with students to really understand all the different contexts. Um, and last year, you know, one of the puzzles that students helped us to understand about this really rapidly urbanizing region um, is the extent to which uh, it, it's surprising on one hand, uh, because as I say, this area emerges out of uh, histories of dispossession and so on. Uh, so they immediately one would think that these are kind of spaces that people feel alienated from, uh, given the history of dispossession and, and removal. Um, but as a result of the work that students did last year, we now understand that in fact, um, these are spaces that people have a very strong feeling of home and belonging, uh, in contrast to, uh, you know, Johannesburg and elsewhere. And it really was not, if the students had not been there, we would not have known this. Uh, so it's really an invitation for you to come and help us understand Skardu, uh, <laughs> London, Johannesburg and elsewhere. Uh, so the notion of co-production, I think is of knowledge is a strong element of the, of the MASC. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Thanks, Njogu. Okay, well, we've had a few thank yous from the chat, so I think that's probably um, where we can leave things for today. Um, so thank you very much uh, for joining. Thanks so much for all of your really interesting questions, which uh, definitely got us all thinking, I think. Um, and thanks, I mean, a huge amount to um, our two student representatives, Lily and Gina. Um, thanks, Njogu, for joining us as well. Um, and Ismaili for uh, helping to set up this session. Um, if you have any other questions, um, you can find my email online. I'm the uh, program director and I, my name is there as the admissions tutor as well. So always happy to field questions specific to your own application. Um, and otherwise, I just, yeah, I look forward to reading your applications, hopefully in due course.